What's the difference between amateur and professional web design? It's not necessarily the tools, the budget, or even a question of talent. More often, it's simply how strongly they adhere to fundamental principles of graphic design and user experience. So in this video, I'm going to highlight some common mistakes on this real live website for a garden center in Canada and show you how quickly we can fix them with a new approach without making radical changes to the visual branding. Looking around the website, firstly on desktop, we have this carousel of images that is the largest item really on the homepage. Then we have the navigation uh, with all these drop down menus as we go across. There's various buttons at the top that are also competing for our attention. Let's just find out a little bit more about them, their history, and maybe just go to the About Us page. We can see that it's the largest retail garden center in its region. And also a bit about kind of their values, their approach, the fact that they want to provide beauty to their customers in and around their home. But that doesn't really come through so much here. Um, I've just grabbed a screenshot of this into Figma. And we've just got some weird alignment things. And these buttons, again, they fight for our attention, but one's slightly bigger because is that more slightly important? We've got social links at the top, which just take people off website. This logo, I don't know what it is. Maybe good to show the phone number because people, you know, need to contact them and quickly ask questions. Um, and this navigation seems like a sensible amount of items. But this large carousel here just dominates, but carousels aren't usually a good idea. It smacks of lack of a decision. Then we've got all these medium sized elements that sort of just crowd the layout. And then we have full justified type, which is never really a good idea on the web. The alignment here is not right. We've got all these smaller links that are just hiding away and they're not going to be really noticed. This little orphan here. So lots of little design mistakes. If we just compare with the mobile site here, it kind of ends up even worse. So we've got all kinds of strange breaking, like this line break where hours of is separated from operations and so much information at the top, logo, hours, button, a bigger button, a logo, social links, no spacing in between them, a phone number. What am I supposed to look at? What, what are you drawing me towards here? And it's not visually appealing either. The menu's kind of hidden away here and it's got this default looking icon. Really doesn't help people, you know, get around and uh, have things where they should be. We've got this weird white space here, which just kind of shows the alignments off. The line continues too wide on this image. These don't align up to the left, but then we've got this center alignment on the sign up part. Is this maybe an ad? But it kind of dominates the whole screen as you'd be scrolling down. Then the carousel, which is kind of the hero section part on the desktop website, is buried all the way down here. Again, we've got line break problem. We've got justified text again. And then we go to center align. And then things aren't aligned properly on the left at the bottom. So lots of things going on and it kind of just smacks of a, a template maybe that's been set up and it's turned into a mess over time with a client. So the first thing I look at is just the logo, just because on this oval sh container shape, it's really difficult to work with and dominates maybe a little bit too much. So what about if we just make this a minimal version of basically the same logo? So I'm going to remove all the shadows and stuff, just hack this to bits in Adobe Illustrator and just use basically the, the brand colors that have been established and just turn this into a more of a simple word marker plus this very retro looking shape. So we'll throw that into Figma. And what I'm going to do now is just, you know, spend, you know, an hour and a half and just do my first idea on everything, my, my first approach. And I've just sped this up for you so you don't have to sit here for a whole 90 minutes. I would just make sure that we did some fundamental things. So I'm setting up a 12 column grid so I can make sure that things are aligned properly. I'm going to quickly play with some of these layouts, but not too much, not like we would on a commercial project, but just really jump in and show you what's possible very quickly. So let's have a navigation right at the top. So it's where people expect it to be and uh, make sure we gather this in this area here with this dark red kind of maroon colored background so that it's obvious that this is the navigation and people know how to get around. So something like five items is probably good. And I quite like the categories they've come up with here. 
but these maybe aren't going to all fall in. So maybe if we put plants, landscaping and garden supplies all under the idea of garden and then we keep gifts, events about. We don't need home as a word because we've just on the left of that, we've got the logo, which we can use as a link back to the home, which is a convention. Then maybe just a more recessive kind of links here to the side and we can just separate out contact tends to go in the top right. So we'll do that here alongside the opening hours, which is an important thing for people visiting a retail location. This isn't quite fitting on at the moment. Maybe play with that a little bit more in a second, but that's a basic top navigation area. Is it good to do maybe a different color background? I think white is going to look the cleanest. So we'll proceed with that. Okay, so what should go in this hero section there? I think we need to say what they're about. And the fact that it's the largest retail garden center in its region, let's make that the, the offer and the thing that people can see. So it just orients the viewer and they know exactly where they are, where they've arrived. And it gives a little bit of a selling point um, for this garden center as well, uh, showing that they're of significant uh, size and they probably have what you want. A little bit more of a, you know, a sub headline there about the year round beauty, you know, what their offer is, what their value. And then the plant finder tool, which was kind of placed up at the top right, because they obviously want to draw people to it, just making it a key, you know, the, the key call to action there. And just making these buttons look a bit more aesthetically pleasing and a bit more like buttons here with just appropriate padding, putting an icon with it and just making it feel very clickable there in its own space. And um, not just looking like, you know, a, a random box or even some of these hidden text links on the left. So we've got a clear call to action here. And then maybe add a, a ghost button next to that, just a more secondary option um, for shopping online, which was the other item in the top right there. So we just need to play around with this. I think maybe just make it, you know, a total a negative. So with the white background and the maroon stroke, we're just bringing like a basket icon for that. And we need some imagery. So. I just grabbed this from a screenshot of a video on their site and I just want to quickly use Photoshop's generative fill for the sake of this demonstration and just clean up this photo just with the curves, add a little bit of contrast. And this now, you know, a picture tells a thousand words. It tells us that really this is a significant place. It looks like a beautiful space to spend time with this little pavilion here. Uh, the setting that this is in. It also shows that it's of a, a significant size. This isn't a little shop front. Um, and we can convey this with some more imagery. So maybe we can have images that sort of are different sizes and they sort of animate in or they animate in and out or they, they move across a plane at the side. So just starting to play around with this and see what works for balance. Maybe it's just something sort of off axis like this, just to frame uh, this headline and it's hard to convey with just a still image, but those things kind of, you know, moving in and out and just giving a sense of what it's about. Wanted to experiment with just a different way of doing that top hero section though. Do we just throw the image in the background and then that kind of conveys a sense of that? It's always a challenge with legibility, but usually if we go if we're sort of a white type on a dark, so just adding like a gradient in at the background, just playing away with different ways to do this to make it still legible and having that within the, the, the type area. And it's okay. It's, it ends up kind of better than what, what they've got at the moment. And um, it's definitely a way of doing things. But you can see I've spent a bit of time with this, but I didn't want to explore too many uh, more options. So I'd probably kill it at that. Look at them side by side. I think we're better the first time on the clean white background. So we'll leave that as an image below that we can use. So how do we bring in some of these other elements? Well, it looks like there's these different badges. They've been given various awards and that's something to celebrate. I also had a look on Google and they've got all five star reviews. So let's bring these together. It's always nice to have three of something. If we have a little group, it just, it's more pleasing than three, than two, sorry. Um, so just making a little badge here out of the Google logo, or we'll maybe add some stars to that and just bring these three badges together in a little grouping and overlaying them uh, so they almost look like stickers that go over this photograph that is full bleed. Brings a bit of visual interest and it also it stops the layout from looking too boxy when we just have these straight horizontal lines between every single section. So I think just having these little badges 
will just add to that. And it really makes the reader see them more rather than being, you know, kind of all around the edges of this interface or buried within other graphics. So now we're saying how large we are. We're showing an image that really um, shows the quality and it makes it look like an inviting place. And then we're also uh, giving more sort of social proof with the award. So we're really adding to the credibility here. We just need to then bring in some of the information that's on this homepage, but in a way that's more legible and it's easier for the user to digest as they go through. So a headline is really helpful to help the user know what this paragraph is about so they don't have to read the whole paragraph. So just saying it's the perfect plans for our climate, that's what we do and the fact that they're a nursery and garden centre. So just working on basic typesetting here, appropriate line height, We've got this aligned to the left with the rag on the right instead of the full justified type. It makes this easier to read and also easier to scan. And we can just put, you know, some sort of accompanying image there. I'll just grab whatever image, you know, was on their homepage on the carousel. And uh, with time, we would want to look at, you know, great photography. That would really help elevate the site. But let I me mean, just add a horizontal rule here just to let you know you, you, each section, what it belongs to. So there's a sense of grouping because there was really no grouping on the original homepage. It was just looked like a th load of things had been like thrown at a wall and see what sticks. Whereas now uh, things are, are grouped together. That is just something that helps users take in each chunk as they sort of move through the site. So I probably just want to duplicate this now uh, once I've added in some sort of call to action for each section. So maybe this plant finder tool again, because that's what we're talking about in this scenario. So let's get this all aligned properly. Then just duplicate that section and we could have a sense of sequence in here so that there is slightly hanging to the right, then the left, the right, etc. as you move sort of down through the page. And I'm just throwing a bunch of principles in as we go through this video, I'm talking about scale, alignment, sequencing, and it's these sort of principles of layout that make layouts work. Um, and that when you have these sort of templates that I just run away with by clients and images are added in, they fall down. So these are what um, a designer will bring you back to and something you want to bear in mind when it comes to your designs. So after this, probably some sort of footer section. We just had a copyright line before, but it, we can do a lot more with our footer. Use some space, you, you know, digital real estate, you know, can go as long as you want. So it makes sense to have a site map here just to, again, help people get around the site, make it easy as possible for them. So just take a little bit of time here to do a repeat of the navigation into a site map and uh, just make that really easy for people to navigate. It, people also scroll down to the bottom. I find myself doing it just looking for the address of the place. If you're trying to find it and you maybe didn't use the contact button at the top. So adding this information in here is something that's expected. Now, with the social icons too, this is a much better place for them. You don't really want those at the top of your website. You're just encouraging people to leave your website. It's like people put their link to their website in the bio of their social to direct them to the website. Then they get their website and they put the social links. Just hide them away a little bit more. Your website is where you can really communicate however you want. You, you've got them where you want them. They're not at the mercy of the algorithm and just scrolling away anymore. Um, so don't send them straight off your site. So I think having them in the footer is a, a more sensible place for these social links. I think really we decided now let's have the sitemap be a full width and the contact information be sort of a next panel within the footer. So that even looks better now with that black background. And it's just making sure things are aligned here. We've got a four column and then three columns making use of our 12 column grid. And then one that just spans across all 12 columns for the copyright statement can be hidden at the bottom. And this really helps this information be more sort of digestible. So just previewing the site, it's definitely coming together now. We can definitely improve this imagery. I don't know, maybe this image of this glass. I'm not sure that's really working. Let's maybe just add in this stock photograph for now. Um, but upgrading the photography in general would be something that would really elevate 
this site, I think. So let's go over to the mobile version as well, because that was probably the one that needed, you could say, even more work. Um, I'm just going to add two columns in for this layout and make my word mark span one and then just have a typical hamburger menu. But this time it's in the place where you expect it and there's some space around it. It's not these really close together white lines on uh, black. And then within this maroon rectangle, really strange how it is at the moment. So it's where you expect it. And then we could maybe have a bar for these opening hours. And me personally, I feel this is a, a really useful little thing in the interface because if I'm going to a retail location, nine times out of 10, I'm just going to, grab the website on my phone and see if it's open or what time it closes today before I go along. So having this little banner, which could just be updated or it, I mean, it, it opens till six every day. So that's really helpful. Um, that that's a useful thing. And obviously that could be varied and you'd work with a customer to find out exactly what they want. But this video is really for designers and, and we're trying to learn design principles. And, and that's the important thing here. Not, um, suggesting that we redesign people's website in 90 minutes without even talking to them. So with it being on mobile, we can just make these buttons the full width and that really helps um, the user be able to click on them, even the fat fingered users and just making sure the type settings adjusted so that we've got, you know, appropriate font sizes and line lengths, but still kind of above the fold on mobile, that first screen before people start to show uh, to start to scroll, they have got the headline, they have got the byline, they've got the buttons, and they've also got a bit of the photograph, which is encouraging them to scroll further and, and showing them what they're about. So when we consider these before and after, I think looking at the mobile ones in the center, you can definitely see how we have really made sense of the information now. Um, these principles of alignment and, and grouping have really come to the fore. And we're also selling the offer, telling people why they should visit this place, that it's a great business. And uh, hopefully they appreciate that and not feel like I've just ripped their work to bits because, come on, this is free promotion for you, your garden center. And uh, I'm sure it's a lovely place to visit for all of you who are in Alberta, Canada. Uh, similarly, with the desktop site, it was just so busy, it felt like it really just feels like a committee of people saying, we need the plant finder tool on there. Oh, make sure we tell people what time we're open. Make the phone number big. Oh, shop online. Make that even bigger than the plant finder tool. Make it in a different color. And they've just thrown all these things on. And there's no sense of how you move, your eyes move through the layout. Whereas with the new version, it really just allows you to really take it in. And it is really elevated, you know, the quality. So people feel like there's more class to this place and um, it goes along with the, the quality of the products um, that they provide. And it's, it's more ap appropriate for them instead of it feeling, you know, a little bit cheap, uh, which is what the current site, you know, gives off. So we haven't changed, you know, the brand colors. We've sticked with their uh, body copy font, which is Lato and then just it's just a Google font. Just introducing another Google font, Hedvig Serif, um, just for those headlines. Uh, but other than that, we've followed their, their basic branding, just simplified the logo. We've used their own images, um, but without changing any of those things and going through a major rebranding exercise, just in a short little hour or two, uh, throwing some things together, doing the first idea, it shows you how by just adhering to fundamental principles, you can make changes. And obviously on a on a commercial project, you'd want to work with the client and talk to them about their challenges and what's important to their business and make sure the website's directed to that. You would want to explore three, four, six different sorts of layouts and ways of doing these designs, introduce other design and graphic elements to really get this to sing. But I wanted to show you that by doing something very quickly that just follows principles, you can quickly make improvements. You don't need to spend forever on it to do that. So I hope this was helpful. We'll see you in a future video and until then, happy designing.